Hello and welcome to the GTU. My name is Spencer Kirkhoff and I'm the Exploration Manager for Tudor Gold. Today I'll be speaking to you about uh, Tudor Gold and geologic modeling, uh, how our modeling is applied towards resource estimation and a little bit about how modeling has advanced and evolved our understanding of the gold storm deposit. Uh, just a cautionary note, this presentation does contain forward-looking statements. Tudor Gold is currently advancing a large copper gold porphyry system within BC's Golden Triangle. Uh, earlier this year we released an updated mineral deposit uh, resource estimate which sits at 23.4 million ounces of gold equivalent at 1.13 grams per ton in the indicated category. Additionally, 7.4 million ounces of gold equivalent at 0.98 grams per ton inferred. Tudor has rapidly advanced the gold storm deposit with aggressive exploration programs from 2019 to the present day, taking the project from a promising discovery to an initial resource estimate in two years, followed by a significant update to the resource two years later in a total of four years. Uh, and baseline studies are underway to further advance the project towards preliminary economic assessment. A little about our technical team. Uh, Tudor has assembled a, a geology-driven technical team that's, that's driving this project forward. Ken Konkin, our president and CEO, is a, a Golden Triangle legend, instrumental in the discovery of the Valley of Kings deposit, which is now the high-grade Bruce Jack mine operated by Newcrest. Uh, and, and Ken was walking over the outcrops we're discovering now over 35 years ago. Natalie Singer, our VP of Resource Development, was also along with that team that developed Bruce Jack, as well as Snowfields Deposit. Uh, I myself was part of the exploration and advancement of the Caribou Gold Project with Barkerville Gold Mines, now a Cisco Development who recently got their environmental permits approved and are going into production. Uh, and the rest of our geology team, including our geologists, project geologists, geotechnicians, uh, continue to deliver efficient exploration programs as we go forward. Uh, a little bit about the deposit and where it is. The Gold Storm deposit, uh, highlighted here in red, is in the heart of the Golden Triangle and is part of the most, one of the most mineralogically endowed regions in the world. Uh, the Gold Storm deposit contains 23.4 million ounces of gold equivalent, and that is made up of 18.8 million ounces of gold, 112 million ounces of silver, and almost 2.2 billion pounds of copper. Uh, the deposit lies along a structural trend known as the Sulfurets Thrust Fault System. Uh, this, this structural corridor also contains Seabridge's gold, Seabridge Gold's Kerr, Sulfurets, Mitchell, and Iron Cap deposits. Adjacent to the Treaty Creek property lies Newmont's actively producing Bruce Jack Mine. Additionally, the past producing Eskate Creek Mine. Also of note is the project's proximity to existing infrastructure. Less than 20 kilometers from the, the property is the paved Highway 37 and high voltage transmission line. As well, Seabridge is currently developing an access road with near-term plans of uh, completing that road onto the Treaty Creek property. A little bit about the geology. The Gold Storm deposit is, is hosted in Lower Jurassic Hazelton Group rocks, which are proximal to the uh, Triassic Stuhini Group. Uh, this regionally important temporal and spatial relationship of rocks, known as the Kaiba Red Line, uh, hosts an abundance of deposits and mineral resources throughout the Golden Triangle. Uh, Jeff Kaiba has presented a, a, a talk on that in this series in the GTU as well. And the Kaiba Red Line represents a period of time and tectonic activity with the right conditions to emplace these porphyry deposits and their related epithermal signatures throughout the Golden Triangle that we see today. And the th sulfurets thrust system represents the regional structural corridor along which numerous of these porphyry systems have been emplaced. 
So we can see throughout the diagram that uh, starting from the south, the Kerr, Selfritz, Mitchell, Iron Cap, and then Goldstorm deposit occur with regular periodicity along this structural corridor. The Goldstorm deposit itself is a gold copper rich porphyry system and consists of a series of early Jurassic diorite intrusions, related intrusive breaches, uh, and placed into intermediate andesitic volcanoclastics and volcano sedimentary rocks of the Hazelton group. The deposit currently measures over 2,600 meters in strike length, 1,200 meters in width, and up to 1,500 meters in depth. And with this amount of size, it still remains open in several directions. The deposit is subdivided into six discrete domains categorized by their distinct mineralization, metallogenic composition, alteration, and lithologies. Three of these domains uh, primarily compose the bulk of the deposit and are the 300 horizon, shown in red, the CS600 horizon, shown in orange, and the DS5 domain, shown in yellow. Additionally, the copper bell, or this, the Route 66 domain and the north-south stockwork, shown in pink and green, represent uh, higher grade gold rich stockworks and the copper bell domain shown in blue represents a structurally controlled proximal uh, shear hosted component of the deposit. Structurally the deposit is hosted between two large regional thrust faults. Uh, these faults converge at an oblique angle producing an expanding wedge of volume in which the deposit occupies. Additionally, many smaller scale faults add to the structural complexity. So as mentioned, the gold storm deposit is primarily contained within uh, three distinct domains, the 300 horizon, CS600, and DS5. These are tabular bodies dipping 45 to 50 degrees to the northwest. The near surface 300 horizon domain host pervasively disseminated auriferous pyrite and pyrite stringers with fine gold-bearing pyrite disseminated valence. Uh, the CS600 domain underlies the 300 domain and is a gold-copper dominant uh, region of the deposit associated with quartz veinlet stockworks, hydrothermal breccias, and porphyritic diorite intrusive stocks. Beneath the 300 horizon and CS600 domains, is the DS5 domain, which is a gold dominant quartz pyrite veinlet stockwork zone that carries a minor silver component. Additionally, Route 66 and North South stockwork domains represent narrow 20 to 50 meter corridors of North South striking high grade gold dominant mineralization. And the Copper Bell domain represents a structurally controlled peripheral structure. Going through the, the main domains here, uh, the 300 horizon domain hosts uh, an indicated resource base of 7.7 .7 million ounces of the deposit at 1.02 grams per ton. It's the near surface gold dominant domain of the deposit characterized by strongly silica sericite pyrite altered fragmental volcanics of the Hazelton group. Mineralization is composed of pyrite rich quartz carbonate hydrothermal breccias and stockwork veinlets. And the image here you can see a, a typical strongly mineralized intercept of the 300 horizon with abundant disseminated pyrite and pyrite veinlets cut by a quartz stockwork hosting base metal mineralization and occasional visible gold. Uh, the CS600 domain is the central intrusive complex of the deposit and contains 9.86 million ounces of gold equivalent at 1.1 grams per ton. Notably, this is where the bulk of the copper of the deposit is contained, coming in at 1.98 billion pounds at 0.32%. This domain consists of a multiple overprinting diorite to monzonite intrusive porphyry stocks. They're related intrusive breccias and hydrothermal stockworks. Abundant disseminated and vein-hosted calcopyrite, tetrahedrite, tenantite, 
and deeper in the system, bornite, uh, comprise the mineralization. Uh, the domain is uh, extensively altered with strong potassic alteration, grading to a sericite or ar argillic alteration shallower in the domain along the uh, 1500 meter depth of this part of the system. Uh, shown in the, the pictures of rocks are strongly potassic altered diorites cut by extensive B veinlet stockworks hosting abundant uh, calcopyrite both within the veins themselves and disseminated throughout the host rock. Uh, the alteration pattern of the CS600 domain is a, shows a remarkable resemblance to uh, a textbook example of porphyry alteration with a deep potassic altered core grading to chlorite sericite and to sericitic dominant alteration as you progress shallower in the system. So it's interpreted we have uh, nearly an entire part of the porphyry system in place intact. The DS5 domain or Deep Stockwork 5 domain underlies both 300 Horizon and CS600 domains. Contains 4.87 million ounces of gold equivalent, grading 1.32 grams per ton. The domain is composed of extensive quartz carbonate breaches and stockworks hosting lead zinc mineralization that is associated with gold and silver content. Significant breaches of, of often greater than 50% quartz material uh, occur frequently throughout this domain, such as the one in the, the core picture shown. Now that we're uh, briefly familiar with the deposit, I'd like to take you through a timeline of the project and the project evolution with respect to the geologic modeling that we've performed and several milestones that have impacted that. So from 2016 to 2018, Tudor had acquired the property, but this was before our current technical team was in place and um, a different group of operators were working the property. Modeling practices at the time were rudimentary at best, and the data collection and management were fairly poor. Um, and this, this impacted the drilling, as we'll see in an example coming up. Nevertheless, uh, progress was made towards discovering the initial signs of the Goldstorm deposit today. Drilling was primarily targeting the Copper Belt domain, which was uh, it's a Gossiness outcrop at surface. Uh, so that's the natural starting point of this discovery. And uh, through drilling, they progressed to the northeast and found initial signs of the large porphyry dis discovery that we found today. Uh, at this point, the system, through historic drilling, measured 1,100 meters by 300 by 500 meters. 2019 and 2020 marks a significant turning point for the development of this deposit. Uh, our current te technical team, Ken Conk and myself, and a few others that have remained uh, to this day came on and completely overhauled basically the entire geologic uh, practice, database management, etc. And really turned the program around literally and figuratively um, through some some geologic analysis and modeling, we turned the drills around the other direction and improved our targeting and really turned the, the program, the discovery around as well. At this point in time, we were discovering some significant structural boundaries that allowed for efficient drill targeting and preliminary geochemical modeling and the basic characterization of the three horizons that we have delineated today was initiated. And through, uh, through this work, we were able to over double the size of the deposit through roughly 50,000 meters of additional drilling over the two years. At this point in time, we released a initial res maiden resource estimate in March of 2021, totaling 
19.4 million ounces of gold at 7.4 grams, 0.74 grams per ton indicated category. In addition to this, Natalie Singer joined our team at this time and immediately increased our technical and scientific capabilities of our team. Uh, the data collection and geologic interpretation was completely overhauled again, uh, improving our abilities to apply vast amounts of data into our, our model. Geochemical modeling revealed the deep CS600 copper rich core of the deposit, resulting in, in drilling of higher grades. Uh, and the decision was made to switch from aqua regia analysis to four acid analysis which is a more expensive but vastly superior method of ge geochemical lab analysis. Uh, and this enabled huge improvements in our geochemical modeling and our geochemical database, and thus our, our interpretations of the deposit. 23.4 million ounces of gold equivalent at 1.13. And as you can see, this is a significant upgrade on the, uh, the previous resource two years before. Uh, and in my opinion, the, the uh, improved quality of the resource is an indication of a, the improved quality of our geologic modeling and technical team moving forward. Uh, this past year, we, we added XRF to our geologic workflow to obtain nearly real-time geochemical data. In summary, through the five years of exploration, that our current technical team have completed from 2019 to present, showing market improvement in size and grade have been completed. So before getting into a few specific examples of how modeling has improved the Goldstone project, I would like to highlight some of the aspects of geologic modeling and how we use various types of data in a geologic model. Geologic model is basically an amalgamation of multiple different types of data streams. Any and all information that we apply to a geologic model and create a best guess uh, representation of what's going on in the subsurface. The most important type of data is geochemical data. And a properly managed geochemical data set is unparalleled in, in uh, mineral exploration. Just the amounts, immense amount of data that comes in with, with assay, assay data needs to be managed properly. And our technical team has done a good job of turning that process around. And as mentioned before, we switched from aqua regia to four acid lab analysis, which greatly improved our geochemical data sets. The difference being uh, accurate analysis of 48 elements using four acid versus 39, 36 elements uh, with aqua regia. And if a bunch of those extra elements are, are very valuable in geochemical modeling and analysis. Additionally, we can use geotechnical data, structural, geologic core logs, and most of this data is accurately correct, collected by our team of ex excellent geologists. Uh, who are continually updating uh, data into our model and into our database for us to apply to the deposit as we explore. Uh, additionally, geophysical data such as magnetics or induced polarization are a big part of um, adding to our geologic modeling. And I can't stress enough about the importance of a consistent quality database the entirety of an exploration project, all the money spent essentially boils down to what is in the database. And that, the management of that is one of the most important qualities of a project. So for the big picture, we're combining all available data that we can, applying geologic knowledge and experience, and creating a best guess of what's going on in the subsurface with our deposit. So now I'll share a few examples of geologic modeling and how it has impacted our understanding of the gold storm deposit. Uh, the first example is structural modeling and how this impacted our early exploration of the deposit in 2019 and 2020. Uh, so structural boundaries within a deposit are, are usually hard boundaries. And 
and therefore are critical when you're modeling. They can, it can range from a simple interpretation of where grade is versus where grade isn't, all the way up to more complex geochemical analysis. Um, so taking over the project in 2019, there was no apparent geologic model in place. And this was, uh, we'll see the consequences of that in the drilling that was completed. So one of the first things that our technical de team did coming into the project was recognizing that there was a large regional scale thrust fault that was cutting off the top of the deposit. Uh, we named this Treaty Thrust Fault 1 or TTF1. So this is a major regional structure. It's planar and very easily recognizable in core, as you can see in the, the image below. Early modeling of TTF-1 consisted of, with our bare bones at the time, geologic crew, uh, basically connecting the dots on a paper section in the core shack, and a simple hand-drawn line on a coffee-stained piece of paper in the core shack represented the first uh, geologic model of the deposit and had profound impacts on the uh, drill targeting going forward. So what we see here uh, are two snapshots in time of the drilling that was completed. On the left hand side of the screen we can see drilling that was completed through 2017 and 2018 and now TTF1 wasn't discovered at this point in time but it's in the image just for visualization. So we can see four drill holes uh, progressing up to the left side of the screen that are drilling through dead hanging wall rock of the deposit. And then drilling through the TTF-1 fault structure into the mineralized deposit below and often ending in mineralization. Still in a favorable horizon for the deposit. Uh, as we can see from the sequence of the hole numbers, uh, one was drilled in 2017, and then the increasing hole numbers of 31, 33, 36 indicate that they were progressing further uphill, uh, getting further away from their target, and drilling more barren rock above the fault due to lack of geologic modeling. This resulted in over 2,300 meters of, of dead rock being drilled above the fault at great cost. The image on the right is our drill targeting to date and what we've been able to complete along this section to define the resource. So post-discovery and modeling of the TTF-1 fault, we were able to have a essentially a 100% target hit rate in this area of the deposit. Uh, additionally, you can see to the bottom right is TTF-2, which is another regional scale thrust fault which acts as a bottom contact to the deposit. Uh, this was discovered in a similar way at the similar time and allowed us to know the bottom contact of our deposit and thus target appropriately with our drill holes leading to a more efficient drill program. The next example of, of how uh, modeling has impacted the Gold Storm to project is the identification of nickel anomalies occurring throughout the deposit. Well, large regional structures like TTF-1 and TTF-2 uh, are fairly obvious and easy to identify. Often smaller scale structures that have big impact on grade uh, can be much harder to pick out and can even come down to just a slight lithology change or even just geochemical differences. Uh, this is why geochemical modeling is an important aspect of the geologic model. Of note is that uh, Nickel is one of the few elements that's assayed similarly between 4-acid and aqua regia digest. So we were able to apply this anomaly between all the, the entire geochemical data set, which helped with the, the amount of data and the identification of, of the anomaly. So the southern and southwest portion of the Goldstorm deposit displays a slightly different uh, characteristics than the rest of the deposit slightly finer grain lithologies and slightly different composition of intrusions resulted in an overall lower grade of gold in this region of the deposit. 
but uh, visual indicators such as mineralization and alteration looked strong. As well, the orientation of this part of the deposit is quite similar to the adjacent main body of the Goldstorm deposit. So at the time, it was considered to be continuous across the Goldstorm deposit. And we couldn't quite figure out why the lack of uh, consistent gold grades continued across this zone. It wasn't until some uh, geochemical analysis was performed that a distinct boundary was dis discovered uh, using a nickel anomaly. So in this image, we can see to the bottom right of the image a clear high nickel anomaly compared to the upper left portion of the drilling. Uh, this resulted in the discovery of the Goldstorm Normal Fault and it provided a clear boundary on the discovery and a, a distinction between two zones of the deposit. And the, the results of this or the consequences is it provided a valuable modeling constraint. So the image to the right shows the, the block models for both the 2021 resource estimate and the 2023 resource estimate. The 2021 resource, shown in, in light gold, clearly extends across the, the boundary of the Goldstorm Normal Fault, pre-discovery of that structure. And that results in the inclusion of a lot of uh, lower grade areas into that resource. The 2023 resource model accurately uses the Goldstorm Normal Fault boundary as a hard cutoff, which resulted in uh, a higher grade, more accurate model of the uh, deposit. The modeling of the Goldstorm Normal Fault allowed for the discovery of the Route 66 domain shown in pink, which is a narrow high-grade corridor. Now, this was originally thought to continue across into the main body of the Goldstorm deposit, but with the discovery of the Goldstorm Normal Fault, we can now identify that as a separate mineralized zone. Now this nickel anomaly uh, occurs in several other locations throughout the deposit. Uh, namely the Copper Bell zone. Uh, so Copper Bell was, was drilled predominantly historically up to 2018. And the due to poor quality data management at that time, there was little to no core photos, incomplete logs, and the interpretation of this zone was rather incomplete. And due to the, the lack of data management, a reinterpretation of this zone was, was difficult. The physical core itself too was in bad shape after a long time as well. So it was very difficult to try and piece together this uh, area of the deposit and reinterpret this. So through geochemical modeling using this nickel anomaly, we were able to piece together a structural picture and produce a better understanding of the structural controlled nature of the Copper Bell domain. Uh, again, this is a, the comparison of the two resource block models of the Copper Bell domain. The 2021 resource was somewhat blown out and, and including probably a lot of lower grade stuff that that shouldn't be in there. Nonetheless, with the structural modeling identified by the nickel anomalies, we were able to tighten up and really hone in that resource model onto the structurally controlled aspects of the Copper Bell domain into a much tighter, higher grade uh, resource estimate. The final example of how modeling techniques have been applied to the Goldstorm deposit is through trace element analysis of the CS600 domain. Uh, as brought up before, the method of analytical lab techniques played a huge role in the geochemical modeling using the four acid analysis. And namely in this example, we're using niobium over scandium ratios, which are two trace elements that get picked up in the four acid digest, but not the aqua regia. 
So we're able to apply this method to the more recent drilling data sets that we have completed. In addition to that, a whole host of other trace elements and trace element ratios can be applied to geochemical modeling, which helps understand the deposit. So once our, our data set included, started including enough data throughout the deposit, we were able to pick out trends uh, geochemically. And in this example, it's niobium over scandium, which produces a, a clear correlation with the main intrusive diorite of the CS600. So looking at the image on the right, we can see uh, a pink anomaly associated with the outlined CS600 domain in whole GS21116. Uh, and progressing shallower up dip in the domain to GS21122, we can see that pink anomaly has split off into several discrete intervals. And this is interpreted as that main diorite uh, kind of fingering out and, and diking into units above. And now what is happening in this example is that due to the nature of the porphyry intrusions being different pulses coming into each other, this was interpreted as a mineralized diorite intruding into another mineralized diorite. So in the, in the core photo to the left, we can see this interval of rock occurs along the boundary of one of these interpreted diorite pulses. And if you can't tell from the image, the rocks are nearly identical. However, looking at the strip log just to the right in the center of the image, we can see a clear niobium over scandium uh, anomaly representing a higher grade pulse of diorite intrusion. The results of this is we were able to, again, tighten up to a more accurate, tighter, higher grade domain for the 2023 resource estimate within the CX600 domain and really define our CS600 domain to the diorite intrusions that are, that are making up this domain. So as we have seen, modeling has had a tremendous impact on our mineral resource estimates. Here we can see a direct comparison between the hard numbers of the two deposits uh, with significant increases in both size and grade across all of gold, copper, and silver. Improving modeling techniques has helped significantly with resource expansion. Uh, we're able to accurately target step out drilling to continually hit high grade portions of the deposit. And this is, is shown as resulting in the increase in the amount of each each metal here. So we've increased the amount of gold from 17.3 million ounces to 18.8 and most notably doubling the copper content of the deposit from 1.1 billion pounds to 2.18 billion pounds. Um, as well, modeling has helped us tighten up and increase the grade of our deposit. Uh, this has taken us from 0.66 grams per ton gold to 0 0.91 uh, grams per ton gold, as well as 0.06% copper to 0.15% copper. And remember that these numbers are, are deposit-wide throughout all of the horizons, but notably the copper contained within the CS600 domain is at 0.32%. So modeling has helped us increase the size and grade of our deposit, and increasing the grade has been a, a big goal of our technical team as we work towards proving this towards a, an economic deposit. Additionally, uh, our geologic modeling has had a huge impact on our on-site uh, drilling logistics and drill planning. Our geologic model is, is the best predictor of where the deposit will be uh, when we're looking to expand. The more accurate our geologic model gets with time, the better the predictive abilities of where the deposit might occur outside its current boundaries exist. And so we do our drill planning based entirely on the geologic model. We're trying to maintain a delicate balance between expanding, stepping out on known mineralization, and maintaining a close enough spacing that we can uh, continue as we go with indicated resource categories. So through uh, improvements in our geologic modeling, 
it's led to more efficient drill planning and continuing and this is continually improving along with our model as we explore uh, the model has impacted our drill logistics so the model is telling us where we need to go uh, where we need to drill our targets but actually getting to those locations can be quite challenging uh, so as we can see in these images we've had to place drills in, in rather precarious locations to get down to where we need to in the most efficient manner and our, our team on site has done a wonderful job meeting these challenges and, and getting it done safely throughout our exploration programs we've also done drilling on the glacier which is a, another set of challenges but we've also tackled that successfully so when we're drilling these deep targets at depth of up to two kilometers sometimes it's quite difficult to to guide the drill to that location so our geologists on site are actively updating the model one two times a day and, and following these drill holes to ensure they hit their targets uh, and continually updating our model as we go uh, our technical team has created an, an in-house custom database management system which allows for the seamless integration of data from our core shack to on-site geologists and this saves a ton of money on expensive software packages and support and allows us to just be really intimate with our all of our data so in summary the uh, the evolution and advancement of our geologic model has helped significantly improve our understanding of the Goldstone deposit and has helped significantly advance our resource estimates. Thank you for the listening presentation. If you like the, the content, please hit like and subscribe. And thanks again for listening.